Hello, it's me again after a few years of not doing any tutorials only because people stopped, you know, using Softimage, which I haven't done, <laughs> but there's no point me doing tutorials for my own sake. Um, so here I am in Maya and I'm going to be taking a look at Bifrost, which is Maya's, uh, you know, ice equivalent, I guess. It's it, it's not exactly the same as ICE, but it's certainly a visual programming language which allows you to do a lot of the same type of things. Um, Autodesk asked me to do this and they are sponsoring this, but it's by no means me trying to sort of, uh, you know, <clears throat> sing Bifrost's praises un what a witting, wittingly, with, un, you know, unwilling. No, I don't know. Anyway, basically, I'm going to be honest, but it isn't a review. It's just me playing around with it. I haven't really got up to speed with it that much. So over the course of the next month, I'm going to be, you know, doing some stuff in Bifrost and recording it as I go. <clears throat> so, right, first of all, what I thought I would do is try and explain briefly what visual programming is, because I'm going to try and aim this at people, to people who haven't done any ice or visual programming at all. And I know when I started off, it was extremely confusing. So, um, Hopefully I can get people up to speed with kind of what the point of it is. I'm not going to be doing all of the um, fluid sim stuff because I've never really done any of that, but I'm just going to you know, explain kind of, you know, what the gist of visual programming is and hopefully get, you know, people enthused to try it. So this is a sphere in the scene and um, we've got this, um, if you go there, Bifrost, this is how you start a Bifrost graph probably other methods as well. So if you've used ice, you'll be familiar with this, which is uh, a kind of, um, you know, this is like a sandbox area where you can bring stuff in from the scene, do stuff to it, and then output stuff back into the scene. So if I create a graph, right, <clears throat> how it works is you've got, these, you've got these nodes. This one here, input, brings stuff in from the scene and that outputs stuff into the scene. So anything that happens between here and here is your own invention of whatever you want to do. So what I'm going to do first of all is bring the sphere in and I can do that just by grabbing that and bringing that in like that. So that's an input. Don't really need that one. So I can just delete that one. And we've got here mesh and we've got output. So if I just bring the mesh and then output the mesh, you'll see, I'm not going to let go yet, um, if you look up here while I do it, I'm letting go now, you'll see this is being created, this BIF object. So this is where it slightly differs to ICE, insofar as the ICE would have um, just, well, you can't, there is no mesh in and mesh out like that in, in, uh, in ICE. I would have basically done something to this sphere, but in this case, I'm using the sphere as an input and then the BIF is the output. So I can move that over there. Anything I do now to this, so this is coming in here, anything I do to it, will, will, you'll be able to see there. So um, if I wanted to do a simple deformer, uh, like a push deformer, which is basically pushing out the normals on this object, what I'd do is something like this. I'd get the positions of all the vertices on this object as they are now. I'd get the normals of this object and I would add the normal value to the point position value and then it would push them out. So let me do that first of all. If I hit tab down here, it'll bring up a menu of stuff like this. <clears throat> now you can either manually find it by going in here. Um, in fact, that's what I'll do for the moment. Uh, so geometry, I'll do um, get, hang on a minute, I don't even know where it is. <laughs> um, okay, I won't do that because I've got it here in my menu. But if you do get point, see it, see it comes up here as you're typing it. So what I want is to get the point position, plug that in, and that gives me out of here, gives me all of the 
point positions on this object. So this little thing here, which looks like a hat, is what's called an array. An array is basically a list of stuff, because obviously there's not just one point on this object. There's a whole bunch of them. So if there's a bunch of different bits of data, you get this sort of hat symbol here, as opposed to that, Just that's just a square. And that means that you know, you're getting what's called an array of um, uh, you know, bits of data. So if I um, then plug that into a set point position, so I go tab, set point position, uh, and then plug that. So I'm getting the, getting the point position there. I'm doing nothing to it apart from just setting them. And then outputting, instead of just outputting the mesh as it is, I'll output from there. Now it disappeared. And the reason why it's disappeared is I'm setting the point position on a geometry which doesn't exist. <laughs> There's nothing going into this. So I have to say to the, the use that bit of geometry as the input to set it on. And then it's back at where it was. So this isn't particularly interesting at the moment because we haven't really got anything going on between here and here. It's just that. It's just not doing anything to them. So that's when we need to do something to this list of points. Now, if I um, add a watch point, what that basically does, the watch point tells you what data is going through there. So it says we've got point position. There's 382 points. Um, the minimum value point is that and the maximum is that. Actually, I don't know if that min means, yeah, I guess it is the minimum value and the max. It doesn't tell you all of the values because that list would be absolutely enormous. Um, but anyway, to do that, you basically you right click and then go, what is it, middle click? Um, yeah, and then you go, um, show info brings it up, removing the watch point just removes it entirely. If I do that on a mesh, <clears throat> so if I do add watch point, it brings up all of the different things that, that uh, are on that mesh, properties on that mesh. So <clears throat> point position, point normal, um, and all this other stuff which you don't really need to worry about at the moment. But these are all different things that I can grab from that mesh, different properties and do stuff with it. So I want point normal. So I'll get another data. I'll just remove that. Um, so I go get data. No, it's nice. <laughs> get property. Sorry. Get. Oh, well, I could just do get point normals, to be honest. Um, get point. That's point. Get point normals is one I made myself because I didn't realize there was already one there. But it's just get point normal. Don't know why it's called. They should be, have an S on the end because it's a load of different point normals, not just one. Uh, so get point normal. If I add this to the point position with an add node, then basically you're going to get this happening. You'll see it in a second. Like that. So the normals are by default, they're one unit long. I think, presumably they are. They are in our ice anyway. So that's why that thing has expanded that much. Now this ice tree is, you know, a, it's probably about as basic as you can get as a deformer, or you know, deforming that object. If we wanted to make it slightly more interesting, we'd want to regulate the length of these normals before they get plugged in. So instead of just having it one one unit long or all, all around, we'd want to be able to multiply this, you know, change the length of this normal. And to change the length of a vector, and I'll explain a little bit more later on what vectors are, maybe not in this video, but um, what you need to do is multiply it. So if I go multiply and plug that in there, plug the output there, then we need another input here. Now this is where it slightly differs to ice because Normally, I would um, just be able to uh, have a value there by default, but there is there is no value, so I have to get a value 
oops, value and plug that value in. And my value is at zero. So that's another thing. Over here on the right, if I've clicked on a node, you'll see that it's got um, uh, stuff which relates to that node. And also, if you want to know a bit more about what the node does, you can read on info, you can read about it there and it sort of tells you what that node will do. So if I go to value, the bits of information here are <clears throat> currently that it's a float um, and its value is zero. It's not an array because you can see here it's just a square. It's not one of these little hat symbols. It's just a square. And the value is at zero. If I stick this value on one, it will go back to where it was because they're going to be one unit long. And that's what we had before. But now, because we've got this value that we can change, we can do, say, 0.5, and it will be half that amount. I can't animate this on here. I have to animate it from the scene. And if I want to bring this value back into the scene, what I do is, remember, this is our input from the scene. So we've got the mesh coming in. But I could also make that value come in from the scene by drawing that to there. And I could rename this um, something. So I could say rename port. And I could rename it, uh, I don't know, push amount, for example. And if I just shut that down. Now, if I click on the Bifrost graph, you'll see now over here that push amount is exposed now in the scene. And this is animatable. So I can now change that value here in the scene and that's being that obviously is going into the input of the bifrost graph here and that's affecting this value here which is then multiplying the point normals and then it's adding it to the point position then we're setting the point position and that's basically what's happening on this sphere here and that's a very simple about as simple as you can get um, intro to Bifrost. I think I'll probably leave it there because I want to make these small bite size videos. Um, <clears throat> if anybody has any questions, I'll answer them in the um, you know comment section of the video. Anyway, uh, so I'll be doing a bunch of these over the course of the next month or so. And um, yeah, it's going to be fun, hopefully. All right. Thank you very much. Bye.